Hello and welcome to Talents Meet again for the second part of the video presentation on insurance. We have seen what is life insurance. Now we are going to see what is non-life or general life. Uh, oh, sorry, we are going to. We have seen what is life insurance, and now we are going to see what is non-life or general insurance. Let us understand the difference between the two. Life insurance protects against the loss of life or loss of limbs, whereas general insurance does not cover the death of an individual. A general insurance is basically an insurance policy that protects against losses and damages other than those covered by life insurance. It's very simple. Whatever has been covered by life insurance is, is life insurance. Anything which is not covered by life insurance is called the non-life or the general insurance. Any insurance not covered by a life insurance policy is general insurance. General insurance policies are for a period of one year and the premium is paid for the entire year in advance. This is the basic difference in characteristic between a life insurance policy and a general insurance policy. Life insurance policies are taken for more than one year at a time. They are normally taken for long periods, 15, 20, 30 years, sometimes 40 years also. So the premium is paid either quarterly, half yearly or annually and uh, uh, in advance of course that is for the life insurance premium. Whereas in a general insurance the policy itself is for a period of one year only at a time. The policy is taken for a period of only one year at a time and the premium is paid once in a year in advance. The premium cannot be paid quarterly, monthly or half yearly. It has to be paid only annually and that premium is paid in advance and general insurance premium are always for a period of only one year at a time. The uh, risks covered by general insurance are many. Property loss, for example, a stolen car or a burnt house or a factory or a go down. This is a typical example of a general insurance. A car could be damaged in an accident. That is covered by general insurance. Whereas if the person driving the car has died, that is covered by life insurance. The loss arising out of damage to the car is covered by general insurance. Similarly, there could be a stolen property or the property itself could have got damaged due to either a fire, threat, robbery, or I mean, um, uh, theft, robbery, or uh, anything else. So the property itself, itself is damaged. That is called general insurance. And it could also be that the factory or the go down is burned down due to an accidental, uh, let's say, a, 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 an electrical short circuit. So the protection from losses against these types of uh, uh, accidents are called general insurance. That, that is the first risk which is covered by a general insurance policy. The risk, the coverage of the risk also extends to the liability arising from damage caused by the insured to a third party. This is called the third party insurance. Supposing I have taken a third party insurance and I am driving a car and unknowingly or unwittingly I injure a third party who is about to the road, then I am liable to pay the third party for hospitalization expenses, etc. And that liability is covered for me by an insurance policy known as a third party insurance. This is the uh, characteristic of a general insurance policy. It need not be lost to myself alone. It need not be lost to my property alone. It need not be lost to my car alone. But it could also mean injury or, or uh, injury or damage or even death cost to a third party because of an action on my part. That is called the third party insurance and that is one of the risks covered by uh, a general insurance policy. It could also mean due, uh, death due to accidents or injury due to uh, accidents. That is also covered by a general insurance policy. There are various products in general insurance. The first product is called the motor insurance which insures two wheelers, cars, trucks, lorries, buses, and so on, that uh, auto rickshaws and so on, that is called the motor insurance. The second one is the fire, house owners or householders insurance. Fire, house owners or householders insurance. Fire is of course fire, any, any damage caused out of fire. Household, house owners is because the house itself has got damaged. Or household insurance is the articles in the house. The house might not have been damaged, but the articles in the house might have been damaged. Let's say a television set or a refrigerator or uh, maybe, you know, 
a laptop computer which was placed inside the house and so on, that could have been damaged by fire. That is called the householder's insurance. And then you have the personal accident insurance. Personal accident insurance means when the, some, when the insured person is injured or is, uh, uh, is his limbs are lost in an accident, that is called the personal accident insurance. And of course, general insurance policies also cover medical and health insurance. And a new type of insurance has come, not exactly new, but maybe in the last 15, 20 years or so, that is called the travel insurance. Travel insurance provides for, uh, 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 for unforeseen damages during travel, especially overseas travel, not necessarily overseas travel alone, but inland domestic travel itself. When you are, for example, these days, uh, even the railways have introduced the insurance policy. When you are traveling by train on the Indian railways, the railways have insured, uh, you are insuring you against uh, accidental death or uh, you know, damage to one's limbs or disability. Similarly, whenever you fly, you can take an insurance policy against uh, 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 an unexpected crash of the aircraft and thereby you could lose your life. And so that your loved ones, your family, is not put to any financial loss. As I told you, when the person dies, you cannot bring his life back. But the financial loss caused by his death could be mitigated to some extent. That is called the travel insurance. And motor insurance is of different types. The first type of motor insurance is the third party insurance, covers liability to a third party for injury, death or loss of property caused by the insured person. I, I think it's very simple, I've already explained to you. I, I'm, a th I'm the insured person, I have a car and when I drive it, I injure a third party. Uh, he or she may not die. Uh, so the, the damage caused to him has got to be compensated and that is compensated by a third party motor insurance policy. Third party fire and theft covers liability to the third party for injury, death or loss of property and damage or loss due to fire or theft of own vehicle due to accident. The example of this is, could be that I am an insured person, I have taken a third party fire and theft policy, I keep driving the car and when I hit against another person's car and that car catches fire and is damaged totally, I am responsible for compensating that third party for the, for, for the uh, fire which has happened to his car because of an accident which I caused. That is known as the third party fire and theft policy. A comprehensive cover in a motor insurance provides for all the three above to third party and self. A third party is only for the third party, it does not cover the self, whereas a comprehensive policy covers for the third party as well as the self. A motor insurance policy to be effective must be a comprehensive one. It is not enough if you take a third party insurance policy alone. In the case of a motor insurance policy, you have to take a comprehensive policy as well. Home insurance or fire or householder's insurance, as I told you, is a very simple one. Home insurance or householder or householder insurance, is, as it is also known, is one of the most important insurance policies, but a very simple one. It's a basic fire policy. It's a basic fire policy. Provides coverage against loss or damage to the insured property, namely the house, shop and factory caused by fire, lightning or explosion. The fire, prop the fire uh, policy covers loss to the property against caused by fire, lightning or explosion. The personal accident insurance or the PA insurance is an annual policy which provides for compensation in the event of injuries, disability or death caused solely by the violent, accidental and external and visible events. It's different from life insurance, medical and health insurance because this is personal accident policy. One can either take a personal accident policy for oneself or a group, for, a group a personal accident policy for the entire family, protecting oneself and the family members from anywhere in the world at any time of the day. Personal accident insurance provides for a 24-hour worldwide insurance protection. It's important to note that although they are issued by Indian companies, you could go abroad and suffer a personal accident, then also this insurance policy is valid. It offers a 24-hour worldwide protection. That is the meaning of the word 
worldwide. You, you can travel anywhere and probably get injured in an accident when you are on your foreign travel. Even then you can claim your insurance for personal accident, uh, uh, provided you can produce all the documents to show that this was due to an accident caused by somebody else in a foreign land. The scope and cover of the benefits differ between different in insurance companies. Just as in the case of health insurance, in the case of personal accident also, the scope and uh, the type of cover given by different insurance companies completely differs from one another. So it is impossible to generalize what are the various risks covered. We can only give an indicative list because the in exhaustive list is rather difficult to predict because each insurance company provides for a different types of coverage. There are about 23 life insurance companies in India and an equal number of non-life insurance companies and each of them, their scope and term of coverage is different. The house owner's policy provides additional coverage compared to the basic fire policy. It may include loss or damage due to flood, burst pipes, etc. And the householder's policy covers household contents and includes coverage for fatal injury to the insured. This policy does not cover the damage to the house itself. The damage to the house is covered by a different policy. The damage to the householder's uh, property is covered by a different policy. And personal accident insurance also covers accidental death, permanent disablement, temporary or total or partial disablement, medical expenses, corrective surgery if needed, and travel insurance can be purchased to insure against the travel-related accidents, losses, interruptions, such as accidental death or permanent disablement, temporary or total partial disablement, medical expenses, corrective surgery, and hospitalization benefits, and of course, funeral expenses as well. Travel, travel insurance coverage is normally limited to the period of travel. This is very important. Supposing I take uh, an insurance policy for flying, let's say between Hyderabad and Mumbai on a particular day, let's say it's the 11th, 11th of May 2017. That policy is valid only for that flight and for that day alone. It is not valid for next one year. It is not valid for multiple travels within the same day. It is not valid for different sectors on the same day. The policy will clearly state that Mr. So-and-so is covered for personal accident insurance while traveling by flight number so-and-so, date 11th of May 2017, from such and such a place to such and such a place, and this is the time of the flight. Of course, if the flight is delayed also, the co coverage will be there because the flight number is there. But however, it is not limit, it is not, it will not be extending beyond the period of travel. So to that extent, the premiums paid on travel insurance are very low. If you take, for example, <coughs> the uh, travel insurance for a one hour flight and uh, on, on a scheduled aircraft carrier, let's say you travel by, uh, uh, for example, I'm just saying you travel by SpiceJet and uh, you have a personal accident while traveling, the, the insurance premium could be as low as 150 rupees. The railways, for example, have introduced insurance policies which cover at the rate of 91 paise per kilometer. 91 paise per kilometer for a coverage of 10 lakh rupees. That is the travel insurance in initiated by the railways. But even there, the, the travel insurance is valid only for one journey. It is not travel, it's not travel for uh, the entire year and so on. It is travel for that person, for that uh, person, for that journey only. For that journey only and not beyond. The coverage will, will automatically come to an end when that travel ends. It is not anything beyond that. So that's why the travel insurance premium is so low. I'm sorry, the, the railway's premium is not 91 paise per kilometer. It is 91 paise per lakh, lakh of sum assured. And normally the sum assured is for about 10 lakh rupees, which means the premium will come to about 90 rupees or so. That is limited to only one travel. However, some insurance companies may offer various combinations of protection to cater to specific needs of customers, including long-term annual policies for a frequent traveler. 
Supposing a person is a frequent traveler, the, law, the insurance company might agree to cover, give him a long-term coverage for multiple uh, travel done within a period of, let's say, one year. That is very rare, of course, but then normally the travel policy is limited for that particular travel only. A travel insurance can be purchased to insure against travel-related accidents, losses or interruptions. It is against travel-related losses or interruptions such as a personal accident or medical-related expenses. You could travel and then get, you could fall sick, so you, you can be insured against that. Or loss of travel or accommodation expenses due to cancellation or curtailment of the journey. You could be traveling, let's say, from uh, from Delhi to uh, New York. And it could so happen that uh, during the course of the journey, the flight is grounded, let's say, in Frankfurt, and it does not take off from there. So that means your journey is either canceled or curtailed or postponed. The insurance company will provide for the losses arising out of that such a cancellation. Or it could also mean that you, know, you, you would arrive late at the destination, so the hotel which has booked you refuses to accommodate you because you have arrived late, because your flight was late and so on. So that means that is a loss arising to you because you have to go to another hotel, uh, which means you have to pay again. So especially in overseas travel, uh, the payment is always done in advance. So uh, once you pay to a hotel, you are expected to check in within a reasonable time. And if you don't check in within a reasonable time because of your delays in the travel uh, arising from a, a different sector, then you can actually ask the insurance company to pay up. That is meant by accommodation loss. So that, that is also possible. Or this, uh, this happens very frequently in international travel, loss of baggage, belongings, and money. You fly from Mumbai to London. You arrive in London, but your baggage goes to Manchester. And the baggage takes at least three, four days for, you, for them to recover and send it back to you. In the meantime, you are left to fend for yourself. You have no clothes. You have no spare clothes. You have no uh, uh, spare. Uh, your, you have no medical. All your tablets are inside your inside your luggage, and you have got money inside the luggage, and you have got your important documents inside the luggage. So, which means that until the baggage is recovered, you are going to suffer a huge loss. That is compensated by travel insurance. This is a very frequent occurrence, in, especially in international travel. There have been many celebrities whose luggages have been either lost or misplaced. That is why international travel also requires or necessitates that in the, tra in the uh, suitcase itself, you write your name and address very clearly and the flight number from city and the two cities, so that by chance also the loaders while loading do not load it onto another aircraft. Or it could be that, you know, when you are flying from Delhi uh, or uh, let's say from Mumbai to, uh, to London, but the plane actually goes from Mumbai to Manchester, instead of offloading your luggage in London, they, they, um, the, the luggage goes to Manchester. This has happened in the case of a very big celebrity of the country. And uh, when the luggage was found in Manchester and the people said that this belongs to Mr. So-and-so, I believe the loader asked him, who is Mr. So-and-so? He did not recognize the Indian celebrity. I don't want to name the celebrity, but he asked him, who is Mr. So-and-so? That is why uh, we should always be careful. We should always be careful. It is better to write <coughs> your name, address, and the flight number on the luggage tag which, the, which your suitcase has got. And despite this, if the travel is either misplaced or lost and your belongings are stolen or the money is stolen or it, the baggage is uh, misplaced and it takes time to be retrieved and sent back to you, you can actually claim insurance. That is a, uh, that is a form of travel insurance. And it also ensures loss of passport. Loss of passport is a very common occurrence for people traveling abroad, either because of their carelessness or due to a theft which has happened. I have known instances personally where uh, a person <coughs> staying abroad leaves his passport in his hotel room and goes to play tennis. When he comes back, he's find, he finds his entire room clean because robbers have broken into his room and taken away all his belongings, including his passport. 
Remember the fate of an Indian in a foreign country without a passport and without valid travel documents. And of course, in this case, the person had to go to the nearest Indian embassy and prove that his uh, luggage was, uh, and uh, prove that his uh, room was uh, uh, kind of broken into and the th thieves took away all his things, including the passport which he had got. So loss of passport is also covered by travel insurance. And of course, personal liability is also covered. Delayed baggage, as I told you, the, the, the baggage instead of being offloaded in London went to Manchester. This happened to a very, very famous Indian celebrity. Travel delays, cancellations or delays in flight schedules cause an uh, immeasurable damage to the insured person, either in the form of accommodation loss or in the form of connecting or in the form of uh, uh, taking connecting flights, missing the connecting flights and so on. Of course, hijacking is also covered by under travel insurance. Touchwood, we have not had too many cases of hijacking, uh, especially in the recent past, thanks to the improved security systems at various airports. But there have been instances when planes were hijacked. There have been instances where Indian planes were hijacked and uh, the uh, travel insurance provides for losses arising, arising out of such hijacking also. And finally, of course, repatriation. You could land up in a wrong country without a valid visa. And that valid visa has not come, not because you were at fault, but if it can be proved that it did not come, even though you were not at fault, you can actually claim travel insurance. You can actually claim travel insurance if you prove that you were repatriated back to India because the country of your destination did not accept you for some reasons known to them only. It could be a different kind of reason altogether. So that was not expected by you and it is not your fault. Then when you have to be repatriated, that involves cost because somebody has to pay, pay for the return airfare as well. So you have to be repatriated, that involves some costs, and it also means that you have suffered a loss of mental damage and mental agony. All that is covered by travel insurance. So travel insurance is a very much a part of the uh, insurance plans in, in a person's itinerary, especially when he travels abroad. Travel insurance may not be seen as being very important when you travel domestic sectors within the country, but when you travel abroad, it's seen as a necessity it's seen as a necessity because it, any, anything can happen when you are traveling abroad. Anything, virtually anything can happen. So it is necessary to take travel insurance. So this is about the general insurance part of it. This concludes the two part uh, presentation which I had on insurance. We have seen what is life insurance. We have seen what is non-life insurance. Uh, we have also seen what are the various types of life insurance policies. We have seen what are the various types of non-life insurance, non insurance policies as well. We have seen the difference in characteristics between the two. A life insurance policy is taken for a longer period. A non-life policy is taken for one year at a time. There are different kinds of life insurance policies, different kinds of uh, non-life insurance policies. Some of them are uh, very critical, such as travel insurance when you are going abroad and even on the domestic sector. But let us basically understand that both life insurance and non-life insurance are this one and the same to the fact, to the extent that they provide for compensation in case of loss. Compensation in case of loss, because of loss of life, then it is called a life insurance. Because if it is not loss of life, it is called a non-life or a general insurance. It's as simple as that. There are any number of variants in an insurance policy. Just like as I told you, there are 1,985 mutual fund products being sold in the country at this time. There could be thousands of types of insurance policies which are, which are sold by the uh, 23 life insurance companies and an equal number of non-life insurance companies. It is well not impossible to list all the thousands of policies in one presentation. But suffice it to understand for us that each insurance company offers a different types of policy and each, each, the, each insurance company, whether it's a life insurance or a general insurance company, the type of coverage offered by each company differs. The premium charged also differs. But the basics of insurance remain the same. Basics of insurance do not change. Whether it is X company or Y company or Z company, whether it's a life insurance company or a non-life insurance company, the basics of insurance remain the same. That is, insurance is protection. 
it is protection and compensation for loss arising out of damage caused by death, injury, accident, fire, or uh, uh, travel, or anything like that. And an, insured, uh, an insurance policy, whether it is a life or a non-life policy, works on the probability theory. And an insurance policy is non-catastrophic. The chances of an event happening to all the insured persons on the same day, at the same time, and, the, uh, and at the same uh, hour or part of the day is next to impossible. This is not going to happen at all except perhaps on the doomsday. It is not going to happen that everybody insured will die on the same day or everybody's house will be burgled or everybody's factory will have a fire or everybody who goes abroad will suffer a loss of uh, damage because of delayed connections or delayed baggage or mispla misplaced baggage or lo loss of passport and so on and so forth. So both life insurance and non-life insurance companies work on the probability theory. That's the most important thing. And insurance is not going to result in the loss, uh, is not going to result in the bankruptcy of uh, an insurance company just because one person uh, has suffered a, a loss. Just because one person has died and the policy amount comes to, let us say, one crore, the insurance company is not going to go bankrupt. Or similarly, just because one person's uh, factory has been uh, damaged in a fire and the amount involved is let's say 50 crore rupees the insurance company is not going to bank go bankrupt by paying that 50 crore rupees that is why insurance companies also what resort to what is known as reinsurance they in fact they cover their liability to the parties by reinsuring with a reinsurer that's a different subject altogether uh, uh, that uh, uh, involves further technical analysis uh, which may not be necessary for you at this stage but just understand that insurance companies also protect their losses by what is known as reinsurance. There are three or four very big in reinsurers in the world. And uh, uh, one of them is an Indian company, GIC Re, or there is the Swiss Re, which is based out of Switzerland. And, and, and these companies are hugely capitalized companies. They can uh, take in any amount of damages. So they are then they become the insured com they become the insurance companies and this basic level insurance companies become the insured persons or become the insured entities so that is reinsurance that's a different subject matter altogether but let's understand that just because one person's factory has been burgled or one person's factory has been reduced to ashes the insurance company is not going to go bankrupt or similarly just because one person dies and his family uh, makes a claim on the insurance company the insurance company is not going to go bankrupt so the insurance is non catastrophic it works on the probability theory and the chances of the event or the death happening or the damage happening all at the same time is next to nothing and most importantly for insurance you have to pay what is known as a premium and this premium is paid in the case of life insurance companies it is paid over a long period of you know maybe 20 30 40 years sometimes even 45 years or sometimes the whole life the insurance premium has to be paid and that can be paid because it's paid over a long period of time it can be paid monthly quarterly half yearly or annually however non-life or general insurance the premium is paid only once in a year and that is paid in advance so these are the topics which we have covered in these two video presentations on insurance. Uh, I really enjoyed making these presentations because insurance is again another subject matter which is very close to my heart and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching these as well. Until I see you in a video next time around, it's bye from me for now. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please continue to keep watching talent sprint videos. Thanks and bye for now.